Hi everyone, this is a beginner video for how to use Photoshop and how to create design boards such as um, concept mood boards and such in um, Adobe Photoshop. So anybody who's used Adobe Photoshop before, um, may some of this may be a little redundant, but I, there may be some tools and things that I discuss in this video that might actually be something you don't know. So I encourage you to kind of watch the video and skip over to the parts that maybe you don't know if you've already used Photoshop before. If you are new to Photoshop, I encourage you to watch the whole entire video. I'm going to be covering a lot today, so bear with me. It might be a little bit of a longer video, but um, this is a mood board that I did. Um, mood concept board, same thing, has same meaning um, that I just created, and um, I'm going to show you tools that I use to create this mood, this concept board. Um, you can see there's various different images layered over the top of each other. There's even borders that I put, um, frame borders that I put around certain um, images. There's a color palette, chips at the bottom. There's text. You can also see in my window layer box, there's a million different photos and things that I use to actually create what you see here. So anybody that's new to Photoshop, I wanna just start off by telling you to go up to the top toolbar and do a file new. File new, and this is how you start any new document, um, any kind of new artboard in Photoshop. Photoshop's a pixel-based program, so it's not vector-based, doesn't have points and line segments the way that Adobe Illustrator has. Um, it photoshops a great tool when you're using photographs um, that's mainly what i use it for so that's why you see the word pixels here is because it's a pixel based program which just means it's it's actually um the artwork appears on a grid as opposed to line segments and points like illustrator so what i want you to do when you start a new page is always use inches not pixels um, click on pinches um, inches sorry um, to make your new artboard size now for the projects that I'm giving, I allow two, two different artboard size, either eight and a half by 11, which is a letter size page or 11 by 14, because I believe that those, both those sizes are really good portfolio page sizes. Um, so I'm gonna just do for this board a 14 width by 11 height because I wanna work in that size. And that'll give me a horizontal um, orientation, which is what I personally like to work in. You guys can work in vertical um, if you want. Um, but I find that I fit more images in a horizontal format. So the width will be wider than the height if you're gonna do a horizontal board. Um, resolution, I usually like to work in 300 pixels per inch, and if it doesn't say pixels per inch, click on the arrow. Um, RGB color mode or CMYK color mode is great. I would not start off working in grayscale um, until we get to our fashion body illustrations and there'll be a reason to do that then. But for all your design boards, concept boards, customer report boards, such, work in a color mode of either RGB or CMYK. And then all you have to hit is the button, that blue button here that says create. And that gives you a nice clean white artboard. Some of the functions in Photoshop and Illustrator are similar, like for instance, when you want to zoom in on your artboard, you do a Command um, Plus on your keyboard to zoom in, Command Minus to zoom out, and anybody that's on a PC, PC Command, you would just use the Control key instead. So those, that function of Command Z, I mean, sorry, Command Minus and Command Plus for zooming in and out is the same Photoshop to Illustrator. Um, there are other things that are very different about Illustrator and when you guys are in a, any program, either Illustrator or Photoshop, I want you to work in a double toolbar. So click on this double um, top arrow here and just work in a double toolbar. If you don't see your toolbar here, then go to Window and make sure Tools is um, highlighted. Make sure Application Frame is highlighted and Options is highlighted. So they all should have a check mark next to them. I would also make sure that your window layers has a check mark next to it and anything else I really don't need at this point. I mean, I know properties and colors is highlighted, but really I need layers, application frame option and tools to be the check mark in your window box. So here's my window layers and we're gonna talk about that. That's the window layers right here. This is very important to Photoshop. We don't use a ton of layers in Illustrator, at least I don't teach with layers in Illustrator. Um, but in Photoshop, they're really important. You can't avoid not using layers in um, Photoshop. So the thing about the layers, we're gonna have this box open the whole entire time you're designing your boards. And if you ever wanted to add a layer, if you hover over any of these things, by the way, it will tell you what it's called, well, it should. This is, um, if you click on this little square with the plus on it, this adds a layer. If you wanted to add another photograph with a new photo in it, 
If you wanted to trash a layer, this little trash can icon at the bottom right hand corner, if you would just click and drag that layer into the trash can and that would trash it. Um, the one thing about layers too, let me just add another layer. Um, if you wanted to shut off a layer and not see it, these little eyeball icons are what allows you to view an uh, image that's on a layer versus taking, um, not viewing it. So if I clicked off that eyeball icon, whatever's on that layer would disappear. Um, this is a lock as well, this little lock icon. If you wanted to unlock the layer, the background layer, um, you would just click off that lock and then it would become layer zero. So that's just a couple quick little things to talk about, but without images in my artboard, they're probably hard to understand. So let me get you some a board that has some images in it. So I asked in a previous video to take your images of research that you gathered from Pinterest that have been approved and edited by um, me and your team and click and drag them into your desktop on the Photoshop. So I'm just gonna take an image from my, from my desktop and click and drag it into Photoshop, my Photoshop artboard. And here it is. And as I explained in the previous Pinterest video, it may come in with an X and it may look blurry. Don't worry about it. Either hit the return key or hit this little check mark at the top um, control panel of Adobe Photoshop. Return key or that check mark and your photo will no longer be blurry and it will also no longer have a X in it. So make sure your window layers is open always because now you will see that my new image that I clicked and dragged from my desktop is now in my window layer box and it's actually called screenshot with all these numbers and whatnot. If you ever wanted to rename um, the layer, you can actually just click on it and do Okay, so you just go to your window layer and you actually just double click on the, the screenshot um, name and you can see it's highlighted in blue. You can just backspace over it and you can actually call it um, girl with khaki outfit. If that helps you to remember your what is on each layer because there is a small little thumbnail box right here that actually shows you what's on each layer. But if it helps you to actually double click on the layer name and to rename it so that you know exactly what is on um, each layer, that's up to you. But um, I usually don't go and name every layer because as you can see in this finish board, I have so many layers here to go and rename those would probably be very time consuming. But if that helps you in any way, um, feel free to double click on the layer name and rename it. I actually am not gonna use the girl with the khaki outfit. I just wanted to show you how you click and drag um, images from Pinterest that you saved on your desktop into an uh, Adobe Photoshop board. So I'm gonna click and drag this into the trash can because I don't need that for this specific board that I'm working on. Um, but yeah, I have multiple layers here and how you select a layer is you, if you click on a layer, you will see it highlighted in gray. That means you're on that actual layer and that's the only image that you can play with. So that's actually layer five. So the way to also know, because especially when you work in, have a million layers on your file, what actually, what image is attached to what layer? If I take this tool here, this little double um, cross with the arrows, this is called the move tool. If I click on that, that allows me to move my images around the artboard. If I click on that, it not only allows me to move it, it also tells me what layer it's on. So here, if you watch, I click on this girl, she's on layer one. If I click on this girl, she's on layer two. So it's really helpful to have this function in Adobe Photoshop by clicking on the image and then it tells you exactly which layer it's on. So that helps you when you're kind of navigating through your layout and placing all your images in different places on the artboard. So the move tool is really important, not only for moving images, but also finding out where they are on the layers. Now, if you get an image that, for instance, I'm just gonna purposely mess this up for you guys so that you, in case this happens to you at home, say you get an image, gigantic, 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 right? I'm purposely doing this. Your image that you copied in from your desktop is so big that maybe you can't even see anything underneath of it, or it might be so big that you don't even understand what the image looks like. This is because the, the photograph that you pulled from Pinterest or any uh, internet research that you've done 
is such a large photograph it's larger than the artboard that you already had set for in photoshop so all you'll have to do on that image is find out what layer it's on make sure you're on that layer and the layer should be highlighted in gray and you go to edit transform scale edit transform scale and make sure your command minus on this board because you want to scale out the artboard so that you can see all the black around it because if the image is so big if you go to edit transform scale um, like we did a second ago, you won't be able to see the scaling boxes unless you command minus away from the artboard so you zoom out. Um, now this is very similar to Illustrator in that you see these scaling boxes that usually the black arrow gives us in Illustrator. Well, this is a little bit different in that, um, sorry, I zoomed in a little too close, um, in that you don't have to hold the shift key. Usually I tell you to hold the shift key whenever you click in um, scale images um, to be, keep them proportional. In Photoshop, you actually don't need to do that. You just start to click and drag the um, photograph smaller until you get it to the, be the size you want, and it keeps it proportional. Now, if you were to hold Shift, and let me zoom in for a second to show you. If you were to hold the Shift key and scale, watch it actually skews your photograph. Um, so you might like that actually, um, to skew the photograph, but if you wanna keep it proportional, you're just gonna, um, move your scaling boxes and you're not going to hold the shift key. So um, if you want to release the tool, then you just hit the return key or you hit the little check mark right here if you want to get off of the scaling tool. All right, so here's my um, background image um, that I am going to put in the background of all of these images here. That's on my um, what once was my layer six that I actually renamed as print layer. Um, but I have all these other images, like I said, that I need to play with as well. So first thing I'm going to do is actually I decided that I'm going to put this image of this um, print behind all the other images. So if I'm going to do that, what I am going to do is go edit, transform, scale, and I'm going to scale it until it fits my whole entire artboard. And then I'm going to hit the return key or the check mark when I'm done. Now you're gonna be like, oh my God, Deb, why did you do that? Now you can't even see your other images. Did they disappear? No, they're still there. And you can see in my layer box that they are still there. If I was to click off the eyeball icon and get rid of the print for a second, you can see they're just hiding underneath. So all I have to do in order to make that print set behind all the rest of the images is I have to click and drag that print and put it below layer one because layer one through five is where all my images of the other things I wanna be on top um, were above that print layer. So as long as I take that print layer and bring it below, then all these images at the top of the layer box are gonna appear above it. So think of it as like when you're in Illustrator and you do an object arrange bring to front or object arrange send to back, the thing that you do, how you do that in um, Photoshop is you just play with the order of the layers. So anything that appear, any layers, images that are at the top of the layer bar are gonna be on top. Any layer images that are gonna be at the bottom of the layer bar are gonna be at the bottom and they're gonna be hiding behind other images. So think about it as a top to bottom order in your layer box is how your images are gonna um, overlap. So now I'm just going to start playing with um, moving my, taking my move tool, moving um, my images around, scaling them, whatever. Um, you can also do something like rotate under transform. You could do scale and rotate. So for instance, let's play with that. If I wanted to rotate her in any way, again, I, I don't hold shift key. I just wait for those little double bendy arrows and I just rotate her. So if that's something you were interested in doing is a rotation of your image, you can click on um, that function. And then again, to get off of it, you just hit the return key or the check mark. So you're gonna scale your images, um, you know, start playing with moving them around. Um, I do wanna show you also, um, I have a little short list that I'm going over to make sure I cover certain things. Um, if you wanted to play with, say for instance this image right here and let me actually scale that dress image a little bit bigger so that you guys can see what my next part of the lesson is going to be so here's my dress and she noticed this dress has a lot of white around it maybe i don't want all that white around it maybe i want to get rid of some of that um, i can either do um, i'll show you another thing later but there's one thing called the click quick selection tool, which will allow me to um, hover over this dress and only select the dress and get rid of the white behind it. 
So that's found under um, this tool right here. So on a double toolbar, it's right underneath this tool called the rectangle marquee tool. It's right under there. It looks like a paintbrush with a little um, dotted line coming off of it. But you have to go underneath to hold it down and go underneath to the quick selection tool. And there's also a zoom function here with the magnifying glass, just showing you that as well. If you take the magnifying glass and click on any image, it will zoom right in on it for you it, as an, another alternative to command minus and command plus. So say for instance, I wanted to um, take away that white background off of this photo. I'm gonna zoom in on it. I'm gonna use the quick selection tool. And the thing about the quick selection tool, if you look here on the top toolbar, and if you don't have these things on the top toolbar, it means that your options in your application frame is not highlighted. So make sure you have some um, buttons up here as well. So quick selection tool has, if you look up here, has a little plus sign above it and a little minus sign above it. So let me show you what that means when we start to draw um, inside what's layer three, which is this dress. So I'm gonna start to just use the quick selection tool. Computer is being very slow. All right, so let me just command D for a second. Okay, quick selection tool. You just start to highlight over your image and I'm only highlighting inside the image that I want to trace. So everything inside this moving dotting line, dotted line is actually what's gonna stay and anything outside of it is what's gonna go, go away. So you wanna keep the dress only, um, then you wanna just highlight over the dress. But what I wanna draw your attention to is areas like this um, here. Like for instance, where it missed the dress um, and you need to bring the little moving broken line to the edge of that dress. So you wanna actually do um, command, this little uh, object selection tool where it says subtract from selection as a little minus sign next to it. If you click on that, then you actually um, get to push it up. So let me do that again. Command Z, by the way, is um, allows you to undo anything that you may have messed up. So you can see now my quick selection tool has a little minus sign in it. If I just click and drag that moving broken line to, mi to minus it, means it pulls it away from, um, yeah, like this is doing something weird. So let me do this again. Okay, quick selection tool. I'm gonna just start using it, drawing over my skirt, my dress, I mean. Keep going, keep going, all the way up, all the way up. Okay, and then anything that you may like here that I might not want to be a part of the dress, I go to the minus sign over here and then I can just move it to make it uh, touch my dress a little bit closer so I don't get that little hook at the bottom. All right, so then you actually are going to hit um, delete. I'm sorry, you don't hit delete. You actually just hover over the quick selection tool, select your image, and then you go to select inverse right here, select inverse. Because your image is around other images, you have to do it this way. You have to go select inverse, and then what you'll notice is it has a moving broken line around the whole entire concept board plus my image here. Then you hit the delete key. And that allows the white in the background of that dress layer, which is layer three, to go away. So now you can see, and then you just do command D, command letter D, D is in dog, um, to get rid of any moving broken lines, command D. And now you can see that I have on layer three a image without the white background. So if ever I wanted to play with um, silhouettes of people and I don't like the environment behind them, I can always delete off the environment behind them and just keep the person in the image only. And then I can layer that in my concept board. And again, Command Z to undo anything like that if you want to um, keep it. So um, you can Command Z, Command Z all day to kind of go back to where you were before. Um, and then also let's talk about um, opacity of a photo. So if you wanted to play, for instance, with um, a photo, so let me zoom in on her, for instance, let's go over to her, to this girl right here, 
click on her. She's layer one. I'm actually going to scale her a little bit bigger. Okay, so say if I wanted to play with the opacity of this photo, if I thought it was a little bit too dark and I wanted to lighten it in some way, I just click on the layer and then I go to opacity and I can reduce the opacity. You can see because I have that print behind her, that because she's not 100% opaque, you can actually see the effect of the print coming through her, which might be pretty cool in some aspects of your design board. Um, but that just lightens the photo um, colors if you play with the opacity on a layer. Um, and then if we want to create frame borders, if you wanted to create frame borders, I actually skipped ahead um, to enlarge some of the photos so they can get to be a bigger scale and move them into the order of the board that I want. Um, but if I wanted to create frame borders of like little outline um, shapes around my photo, I did want to show you this first. So as I was moving around and scaling my photos, um, if ever I'm done scaling a photo, so, so I just finished scaling this one, if I wanted to move over to the next one, it won't let me automatically just click and drag over to another photo. I need to hit the return key or the checkbox in order to release the scaling function. So that's really important. If you're like stuck on scaling and you're like, I'm done, I want to get in the next in the, go to the no, next photo. Well, you won't can't automatically just jump from one photo. You have to hit the return key or that check mark, and then you can start moving around and um, scaling other photos. Um, accordingly. So I'm just going to scale one more here and then I'm going to show you how to, to do a border. Um, and again, I'm hitting my return key to get rid of that. Okay, so if you wanted to do a border, um, kind of a frame border, which is kind of what I have around some of these images, I have this black frame border around. That's up to you if you want to add that as an element of your design board. Um, if you want to add a frame border around certain images, just again, take the move tool, click on the image, find out what layer it's on. So this one's on layer five. So I'm going to actually use the rectangle marquee tool, which is in the top right hand corner of the double toolbar. It looks like a broken um, line that makes up a rectangle shape. You can actually just click on that and draw a rectangle. But I want to talk about these boxes for a second because um, Unlike Illustrator, these are usually called your fill and your stroke box. Well, there is no fill and stroke box in Photoshop. It's actually called the foreground color. If I highlight over it a certain way, it should tell you. Foreground, foreground color is where you see the red. The background color is where you see my brown. Um, you might have it default just to a white and black chip automatically when you open Photoshop. Just know that the, the box on, on the left side, top left, is the foreground color and the bottom right hand corner um, box is the background color. So basically it's kind of self-explanatory. Whatever you see um, on the top is what the box color is gonna be. So let me just show you right now. I'm gonna take the rectangle tool, rectangle marquee tool, and I'm gonna be on layer five, which is my um, this image right here. And I'm just gonna click and drag the rectangle marquee tool box to be a box frame around my photo. And it's a little bit um, wider than my photo. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. Um, it's a little wider than my photo is because I actually want the um, black box in the foreground color to be a black frame around this photo. So in order to fill anything with color, you're gonna go create a shape, then go to edit fill, edit fill, and here's the fill box. So there's a foreground color and a background color in here. So you can pick, okay, if I know I want black, that's the box on top, that's the foreground color. I'm gonna fill it with that. You can also fill it with a different level of opacity if you don't want it to be a solid black. If you want it to be a little bit more transparent, you can play with the number here. Um, but I know I want it to be 100% true black border. So I'm gonna hit okay because it's my foreground color, hit okay. And you're gonna see that I have a black box and that's great, but you're like, where did my photo go? Remember it's, it's actually, let me go backtrack for one second. I needed to actually add a layer, sorry. I need to add a layer first if you're gonna make borders. So really important, add a layer, which is right here in the window layer box, add a layer first. So layer six, that's what I need to do. Layer six, then draw your rectangle marquee tool around your um, frame photo. And layer six is where the black box is gonna exist because actually what I realized what I did a second ago is I'm glad I'm making mistakes in this video so you guys can see at home. 
um, is if I filled that box, that black box on layer five, it actually would have deleted and covered up my image of my photo to be all black. So I need to make sure I have a whole new layer. Anytime you wanna do these framed borders, make, make sure it's on its own separate layer. So edit fill, foreground color, make sure foreground color black, normal opacity 100%, hit okay. Okay, so now don't be scared because it, it does look very similar to what just happened a minute ago. But because if you can see in my little thumbnail view of my window layers, I have a black box on layer six, I still have my image on layer five. So before when the black box and the image were both on layer five, it, the image did go away. So now I have a separate black box on layer six, I'm safe. Even though you don't see it, it's just hiding behind. All right, so to re release this broken line, you just do Command D or Control D for people on PCs, and that removes that moving broken line from the rectangle marquee tool. Now if I just want to move my photo above my black box that I just created, all I have to do is click on layer five, which is where that photo exists, and I click and drag it and pull it above layer six. So again, the, move, the moving layers around is really important because you may create different shapes on different layers, but you know ultimately you want them to be, be behind a photo. If you want them to be behind a photo, just play with your layer order by either pulling it up to the top, which means that photo is now on top of this black box, which you can see, but it isn't on top until you pull the layer up above the layer where the black box exists. Now, if you need to move that photo around inside that black box, you can just take the move tool again and move your photo. So you can play with it being off center if you wanna do an off center frame, or if you wanna center your photo inside the frame, um, just move it into the center. So I'm gonna do another framed um, uh, frame box of color, um, just to reiterate the lesson one more time. I'm gonna add a new layer right here, create a new layer. Now I'm on layer seven, and I'm gonna create a framed black box around this metropolitan um, Parisian subway photo. So again, I'm gonna take the rectangle marquee tool and drag it around my photo and make it the, if I'm trying to do a framed border, I'm just gonna make it bigger than my photo is. And then I have my moving broken line a little bit bigger than my photo. And I have, if I wanna do a black again, I have the black in the foreground. If you ever wanted to move and do a white border, you just move the arrow, um, double-sided arrow. If you ever wanted to pick a brand new color, you just double click on the color and you can pick a different color from the color picker window if you'd like. Um, if you also wanna use a color from inside of a photograph as a border, you can use the eyedropper tool, which is the same as in Photoshop, I mean in Illustrator. You can actually eye drop on a photo of a color that you like. For instance, if I want, if I like the color of this door, and you can see the foreground color becomes that. And now you can create a new frame border of that color instead. So edit fill on that color, and now that little um, bronzy color will be in my foreground. You can hit OK. And again, I'm on a separate layer. I'm not on the layer where that photo exists. I'm on a separate layer because I added a new one, which is layer seven. And now I have this bronze colored. Um, this bronzy orange color box and then i do a command d to release my broken moving broken line and now i'm going to find out where that photo was and i remember it was layer four i can't click on it because it's actually behind um, my my box of color so if you remember where it is you can click and drag layer four above layer seven and now you can see that my photo is above um, the the colored box that i created for my frame and again i can take the move tool and move um, my photo inside of it. So you can use, you know, you can create different colors with your frames if you want to frame out your photos in any way by either eye dropping onto colors inside of other photos, or if you have a color palette already existing, you can eye drop onto that, or you can just um, double click on the color in the foreground and pick any color just like you can in Illustrator through the color picker window and scroll through here and find your color. The circle you click on inside of here is what's gonna become your color and then you hit okay. If ever you um, made a frame border or did anything with color, um, whether you created a color palette, which I'll do a different video of, or these frame borders, and you wanna change, you decided, oh, I don't like this color behind this picture anymore and you wanna change it to black, for instance, you wanna change it to a different color. 
um, you can just double click on the foreground color, get the black color or whatever other color you want to play with, hit OK. I have the black chip here. And then you can use something called the paint, paint bucket tool, which is right here. It looks like a little tipping paint bucket. And you just find the layer where that colored box is. So where my, my little orange bronze um, color box is, is on layer seven. Click on it, take the, the paint bucket tool. And then the one thing about the paint bucket tool, I wanna look at this down here in the black. So the paint bucket tool, the little arrow, little cursor on the top right hand, uh, left hand corner, a little black cursor, that's where you actually need to click your color into. So some people get confused because the way the paint bucket icon on this tool here um, tips out. You think that sometimes the, the part where the paint looks like it's tipping out of the bucket is where you actually um, click on, but it's actually the tip of the cursor where you click on. So if you can see my tip of my cursor, not the tip of the bucket spilling over, is what I actually click on to change to black. So I'll do that one more time. So you can see I'm on layer seven. I got my black in my foreground color. I click on my live paint, my paint bucket tool. And then I take the tip of the cursor, I'm gonna zoom in on this. The tip of the cursor is where I click on the color that I wanna to change to be black, not the tip of the paint bucket. Cause you can see the tip of the paint bucket, paint bucket that's spilling out of the paint bucket icon is actually inside the photo. So that, don't worry about that. It's just the tip of the cursor that I wanna um, click on the color to change it to a different color. So now I can change the color, even though I picked one color before I can change it again using the paint bucket tool. The next thing I want to show you is if you wanted to change the, the colors of a photograph. So say, for instance, you really love the photo, but maybe it doesn't fit into the mood and the color scheme that you're going for in your actual concept board. So you think maybe if I just change the colors around, maybe it'll fit better. So say, for instance, if I wanted to change the color of this photograph right here, again, I can find it using the move tool. It told me it's on layer two. There's lots of different color functions you can do um, for that photograph. So you can go under the word image and you can go to um, image adjustments. You can do something through brightness and contrast. I'm just gonna go over this really quick. Watch this photo change. If as long as there's a preview bo bo uh, option in the bottom corner to check on, please make sure it's checked so that you can see your um, colors change in live time. So you can see when I move the brightness around, I can play with that. Um, I can play with the contrast in the photo. And if I like it, you hit OK. If you don't like it, you hit Cancel. So let me zoom in one more time on this photo. And then there's another option under Adjustments. That was Brightness Contrast. There's also Levels. Um, sorry, not Levels. There's Image Adjustments Curves is where I meant to go. So again, I'm working on this photo. And you can play with moving these it's like weird line segments and you just kind of move them around and see what happens to the color. Um, you know, you can move them around up and above and you can just start to see color effects happen. So you can either hit OK if you like it, hit Cancel, make sure your preview box is, is checked so you can see it happen in live time. Another thing, image, there's also something called invert, image adjustment invert. If you go to invert, it literally just is a one, op, one button operation. It just takes the colors of the existing photograph and does the complete opposite. So black changes to white, um, yellow changes to blue, um, and then I'm gonna command Z to get out of that because I didn't like that color effect. But if you liked it, then you can keep it. Then you can go into image adjustments, hue saturation, which is another thing I play with sometimes. And I play with just like that changed the color dramatically. It went from a gold border to a red border. Um, but you can start to play with that by moving the scroll bars back and forth over hue. Again, remember, remember that preview should be checked. Saturation, you can play with that. Um, lightness um, of a photo, you can play with that. And again, hit okay or cancel. Um, but that's how you can also play with the color effects of your photos. Okay, so the one, another thing I wanted to show you is if you ever wanted to layer photos one underneath of the, an, another, like right now I have all my photos kind of spaced apart really nicely, but in this photo you can see I actually enlarged her really big so that she layers underneath this other photo. So if you wanted to start playing with like collaging your photos and they start to overlap, um, you just I'm gonna scale this photo right here. It's layer one. I'm gonna just do a quick uh, transform scale and I'm gonna make her so big that she's gonna start to layer over other photos. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit the return key. So if say for instance, let me just put her above, there we go. 
So if I moved her above, you can see she's now interrupting this photo, this corner of this photo is now interrupting that photo. So say I don't like that and I actually want to, this photo to overlap this photo. So all I have to do is take layer one where she exists and if I click on this photo, I notice that it's layer two. So anytime you click on a photo, remember look at your layer box and see where it's telling you it is. So I know that layer two is at the lower end of the layer order, but layer one is this girl right here. I want her to be hiding underneath this girl. So all I have to do is take layer one and drag it below layer two, and now you can see that corner doesn't overlap. So again, it's all about layer order, and as you start to collage your photos, really keep that in mind on what the, the effects that you want when you overlap your photos, where it appears in the layer order is really important. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna go through in this video, there's gonna be another video of, um, that goes into creating a color palette, but the last thing I wanna do really quickly is just add some text. So you can see in my final uh, concept board, I added um, text here, and I actually added a colored square behind it. So let's just quickly do that together on to complete this video. So I'm gonna add, um, first I'll add my box of color, which you can see here is right here, it's black. I'm gonna add a new layer for that. And I'm actually gonna, uh, just case it's now layer eight, I can always move it around later. I'm gonna add a box of black color. So I'm gonna use a rectangle marquee tool again to add a box of black color. My foreground color is black, which is what I want. And I'm gonna add a box. I'm just gonna do a random box like that. I'm gonna do an edit fill. Foreground color, opacity, 100%, yes. Okay, so now again, you can see because of the layer order, um, layer eight is overlapping layer one. So all I have to do is just pull layer one above layer eight, and now you can see that the black box is behind it. So now what I wanna do is actually rotate it. I'm gonna image, I'm sorry, edit, transform, rotate. And I'm gonna rotate that box. Um, oh, sorry, Command D. Let me just backtrack for one second. Okay, so I backtracked for a second because before I start to rotate, what I want to do is actually Command D to release the broken line. So I've created the box. I need to release it first by doing a Command D, and then I can go, as long as I'm on the layer where the box exists, which is layer eight, now I can trans edit, transform, rotate. So you got to do one function at a time. You just, like I said, you can't just toggle back and forth between different functions. You have to release the tool first before you can move on to another tool. So I just rotated that box because I really only wanted to show a little bit right above her and it to be angled. So now I can hit the return key or the check mark. And now I have this angled box. I can also just continue to mess with it and um, click the move. I can even go and scale it again if I feel like I need it to be a little bit bigger. Um, I can scale it if I feel like I wanna just make it a slightly larger angled box that I still have to hit the return key or the check mark to release. Um, so as long as I'm working on layer eight, I can continue to manipulate that box. Now we can use the text tool, which is right here, the letter T, which is the same as in Illustrator, click on it. And now the, the color of the font is gonna be automatically the foreground color. So if you wanna flip the, the black into white, or again, if you wanna pick your own custom color, um, you can through the color picker window, or if you want to eye drop on a color, if I wanted the color to be gold, I can eye drop on the color and make sure the color is on the foreground before I use the text tool. And the text tool actually becomes its own layer, so I don't need to create a new layer for that. So I'm just going to click down, and you can see right here it automatically became layer 9. It has a T in the thumbnail um, view. So I'm gonna just click on it, and here up in the control panel is all your list of fonts, so you can start to scroll through the fonts before you even start to type, or you can type something out and then um, change the font later. So I'm just gonna pick um, one of these fonts, and then I can backspace over my font just like you would in Illustrator, and you can type in the name of your collection or um, you know the name of a fabric, um, and you can just start to type with the text tool. So there's a whole nother video, you guys, on um, just using the text tool alone. So I'm only showing you just quickly how to create text, but there's gonna be a whole nother video on how to manipulate text and um, change the color, change the way the text is, is um, looking in your artboard. So please watch that other video. 
But again, if you wanted your text to overlap a photo, so if I wanted to start playing with it overlapping photos, all you have to do is just take the text layer and push it over top of another, um, in, above another layer, and now you can start to see I can overlap my text over top of a photo. But again, the order of the layers is really important in terms of laying out and overlapping things one on top of the other. So that's gonna conclude this quick um, little Photoshop introductory video. I am gonna have a separate video talking about how to create a color palette, so please watch that.